Hey there, this is Jorge Varela for the ButtonSmashers.com and here's our video review of Torment Tides of Numenera for PS4. So here's the short version of the review. It's a rough and overwhelming start, but it gets pretty good over time. If you don't mind reading a lot of text, then you'll love how rich the world building is in this game. Believe me, you'll learn to love it, even if the combat does suck ass. But hey, look. The, the long version of the review goes like this, J just hear me out for a bit. Um, despite how much I love fantasy-themed stuff, I've never really branched out beyond the Elder Scrolls series and a few select others. Um, most of all of the other fantasy-themed works, be it you know video game written or film form, feel almost exactly the same to me and don't really do enough to stick out from the rest. Fantasy-themed worlds, at least to me, have been less about the story and more about everything else that surrounds it. This is something that Torment Tides of Numenera does very well, to the point where I would rather read a book about it, honestly, rather than play a game, since that's the part that falls short for me. Torment Tides of Numenera is also playfully known in other reviews that I've read as the greatest book you'll ever play, and that makes me chuckle a little bit, because that's kind of true. This is due in part to the overwhelming amount of text that the game presents throughout the whole thing. It can be very overwhelming at first, but soon you'll realize that it'll be the key propelling you forward through the campaign. Literally every single tiny thing that happens in this game is described in massive detail. From someone's appearance to even the smell of certain rooms, you'll always have an opportunity to enrich yourself in the great descriptions and almost poetic writing of the text boxes. Because reading is such a massive part of the game, I would have appreciated a bigger space to read, or at least bigger text. Since I was playing this on PS4 with a fair distance away from the television, I always had to hunch over and look closer to be able to read the relatively small text primarily found in the lower third of the screen. Since reading is so important, I would not have minded an option where I could just have larger text that fills the whole screen. Now speaking of the interface, I did allude to the point that I didn't really enjoy the more video gamey parts, or at least the more visual parts of this game before, so let me explain. This is mostly due to the generic feel that I talked about at the beginning. Even though the descriptions for everything are so rich, the actual things that you look at in the environment are a lot less impressive. Because everything is seen from an isometric viewpoint, you can never really get the full picture of what you're looking at, hence the hyper-specific descriptions. So usually, this way of writing is implemented because this was kind of necessary when you read a fantasy book, or any any book for that matter, or when you played Dungeons and Dragons and you really wanted to get into it, right? But it also makes sense here. This isn't a fully 3D rendered first or third person game like Skyrim or The Witcher, so Torment kinda leans on its text to make up for the relatively boring look of all the NPCs and environments. I mean, graphically it's fine, there's even some certain places that I would say look really awesome, but just the overall art direction in general doesn't really grab me all that much. One great example was during a time that I had to negotiate with some giant digging creatures underground that needed to move somewhere else, or else the buildings and the surface would sink. Their description was so intriguing, but in the actual game, they kind of just look like some big gray dudes that sort of just stand around. I would have liked everything that it presented in the text to actually be reflected in the game in some way. It's kind of like watching a movie where everything is described for you, right? Which is problematic for a visual medium. I'd rather have games like these show you rather than tell you. And unfortunately, Torment tells everything and shows very little that fits that. Having the audience fill the gaps with their imaginations can leave us kind of disappointed if whatever we have in our minds is a lot more heightened than what's actually there, and for the most part that's what ends up being the case. This feeling translated to the menus as well. Whenever you pause to check your objective, stats, or anything else, you're met with a cannonball of information. Every time I come into these menus, I never know what to look at because of how cluttered with stuff the menus always are. If you're on PC, I guess it's easier to just click on what you want with the mouse, right? Just point at it. But on PS4, you need to find what buttons you're highlighting, then trudge your way to wherever you need to be. Some options are tied to buttons on the controller like the touchpad or the shoulder buttons, so it's difficult to remember all these things, on top of the menus feeling a little clunky and difficult to use. If this bothers you enough, I suggest going for the PC version just to facilitate this process through the mouse. If you thought Operation Abyss had too much going on in the menus, then think again. After you're done reading and looking at menus, you're free to explore the world, but be sure that you talk and do everything possible in the area that you're in, because the loading screens, at least in the PS4 version specifically, are very long. Even when you are going into small rooms with barely anything in them, it takes forever for the loading bar to reach 100%. It's even worse when you realize that you can't really do much in that small room, so you go back outside and get another loading screen that's sometimes even longer than the one before it. It's frustrating, and it makes me wonder if all the other versions have the same problem. Another problem that I was intending to point out was the frame rate, which was very inconsistent starting out. 
There were many moments where completely empty rooms ran at 60 FPS, but the moment one person appeared on screen, it would dip to very low levels. However, these problems did slowly get fixed over time as more updates got rolled out. It's a lot more stable now, so I recommend that whoever purchases this game on PS4 make sure to update the game to the latest version, or any other version that you're buying, just be sure to have it updated. Unfortunately, one thing that I don't think any update could fix is the combat. For the most part, I like the whole game alright, but if there's one particular thing that I simply dislike, is how the fighting works. Aside from the fact that there's barely any of it to begin with, and yes, I do mean there's barely any of it, even in the footage that I'm recording <laughs> right now, I was unable to capture any fights because I couldn't find any. Aside from the fact that there's barely any of it to begin with, when you actually get to it, it's not really all that enjoyable. Believe me, there really aren't a lot of fights in this game. Even in the footage that you're watching now that I recorded for you guys, I was not able to capture any fights because I couldn't find any. It's pretty slow and everything you do takes forever. This gets worse over time when you get a full party and more than a handful of enemies to handle all at once. And of course, some frame rate issues do pop up here as well. Since you can't fast forward through everyone's turn, you have to sit there for the whole thing. Another potentially fixable problem is that you can try and manipulate your stats to be more powerful so fights can end faster. You know, when you first make your character at the very beginning, you can get like a tough guy that fights a lot. But since most of the game is conversations and convincing people to do stuff, you'll probably be better off upgrading speech-related stats, leaving you more vulnerable to enemies. On the brighter side, there are a few story-related fights that are actually required, so you won't suffer too much if you're prepared ahead of time. But to summarize, the combat feels like more of an afterthought, and is definitely not one of the game's main selling points. Overall, I do think that Torment Tides of Numenera is a game that you learn to love over time, or at the very least, I learned to love it over time. It's not a bad game at all, but it certainly lacks in a few details that stop it from being awesome, you know? It gives you a ton to think about up front, but you'll eventually manage and want to see the story through to the end. Its dialogue and flavor text is filled with so much richness that you'll want to explore every single dialogue choice. Even though the text, combined with your imagination, might create a prettier picture than what's actually there, it is still a really fun time that made me wish for more, particularly in book form. There's definitely a lot that can be done to make the actual gameplay more accessible or more fun or more streamlined, so if there were any sequels planned, I would love to see some improvements put in place. If you're into fantasy stuff, it's pretty likely that you'll like this game alright, or at least, you know, you'll enjoy reading this.